everybody, welcome back to the dumbest space dock on all of YouTube, Pit Stain Hobbies. We're back on the Enterprise D, where it's uh, issue 23, stage 87. Oh dear, here we go. Okay, so let's just let's just slice this part open here real quick, and I'll get right down to the brass tacks, as they say. There we go, and there we go. All right, this is not logical. This bad boy. Your deflector dish. Okay. All right. Well, it's wrong. It's very, very wrong. Um, here's what we had from like stage like three or four, five. I don't know, somewhere in there. Um, and we've got we've got this blue thing. We've got this with some orange in it. We've got that in there. We've got this with some orange in there. We put that all together, and uh, it should fit. Oh, you got to kind of snap this fella down onto the back of that. And then, and then, ba-boom! Snappity snap snap. Don't talk back. Um, that's what we have, and it's just its just not right. <laughs> it's so not right. Uh, it should be, like, all yellow around here, the same color as the uh, the Bassard little uh, venti parts. And uh, also, the, the whole thing, the whole inner, this is, this is, this is just wrong. Um, so to fix that problem, we've got some lovely parts uh, that were designed by John Bassey. And mind you, links to all of these things will be on the My Enterprise D website. I'm going to link it below um, under the, uh, the model remodel deflector dish mods. So we've got, we've got this little center section here. We've got this outer plate here, okay, which is quite nice. We've also got, uh, you know, the two by three by four white LEDs that are in here. Uh, we don't necessarily really need them anymore, but I did get some two by three by four blue LEDs. So I am going to desolder these and solder on uh, blue ones. So we don't have any white light. And then this was this was this was the tricky one to find. But there's a link on, uh, like I said, the My Enterprise D site. To this stuff this is 2.7 millimeter very very narrow um blue cob led strip and really i got a whole roll of it here like i don't know meters of it something like that five meters i bought uh it'll come in handy in future projects for sci-fi stuff um but this is five volt 2.7 millimeter thickness it's very thin um to actually solder leads onto it you need to peel off the backing Peel off the backing, and uh, actually, if there's any adhesive on here, you need to wipe that off so that you can solder. It's really tiny. So you're going to need your magnifiers. You're going to need a soldering iron. Fair warning, okay? Um, these parts are available on Shapeways as well, uh, but the, the three, the free STL files to print it yourself. If you have a resin printer and clear resin, you can do it yourself. Uh, otherwise, uh, he put them on Shapeways for basically zero profit. Uh, so whatever Shapeways charges, that's like the bare minimum. Um, so yeah, there's that. So we got two by three by four blue LEDs, blue 2.7 millimeter cob LED strip. This is like an AliExpress type thing, I think. Our 3D printed bits here. And this part, we have a second one because I ended up, I bought multiple started builds. So I ended up with two of these things. Um, and I am currently soaking this part in 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol. And it can take hours. I'm going to also try to accelerate that with a toothbrush so that we can get some more instant gratification on this video. We will. I'm not putting this video out until this dish is done and painted. We're also going to need a few other things um, because these things should be like copper. Some of these parts, these should be copper. Okay, so we got Tamiya XF6 copper. I already have this thinned down for airbrushing. And we need our, where is my other paint? Hold on, i got to go into the other overflow drawer. We're going to be using Vallejo Game Air Gold Yellow. All right. And we're going to be using some regular Rattle Cam Black Primer for light blocking. And, uh, and then... No, and then... <clears throat> and we'll, uh, we'll probably be using some... Uh, what do we got here? Mr. Surfacer... Oh, this is, this is the good stuff right here. Mr. Surfacer 1500 White to put behind the yellow. 
um, on this part because we want it to be a nice, nice, bold, bright yellow. All right, so that's what we're doing. This should be a lot of work for this deflector dish, but I will uh, try to get everybody through it properly. And uh, let's get started. <laughs> well, I'll be right back. Okay, so first we're gonna light block the back. I've masked off approximately this section so that our uh, LED uh, cob strips can, can shine through um, certain parts on the inside. I masked off the entire front here with a big piece of Tamiya tape, trimmed it down a little so that we get our paint fully in there. And we're just gonna spray this down with some black primer and I'll be right back. Okay, so our black primer is done. We're peeling off this and you can see it's, it's, it's light blocked. It's uh, light's not coming through there anymore. Now, this is the tricky part, is you wanna mask this ring, both on the outside and the inside of it. And for that, we use some Tamiya uh, six millimeter uh, tape, our tweezers to place it down there very gently, and then a little uh, a cuticle pusher from Amazon. I get a bag of these for nothing. And a really tiny flathead screwdriver to kind of burnish it down on the outside. And you wanna burnish it down on the inside as well. Now what we're gonna do, is I'm not even gonna mask this off. It's it's harder to mask off this gray than it is to repaint it after the fact. It it really is. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna we're just gonna blast this entire thing in the face with our uh, white primer, and uh, I'll be right back once again. Alrighty, so that's white. We're leaving all that stuff in the middle. Just that that ring. We're leaving that masked. We've got our uh, gold yellow. And then also for doing the gray on the outsides here, I'm gonna use uh, Game Air from Vallejo Stonewall Gray. This isn't on Todd's website. He uses a Citadel Air Administratum Gray. I find Citadel's Air paint difficult for me to spray. Um, and I think everyone would agree, in our group at least, <laughs> that uh, spraying Vallejo Game Air is, is a bit easier than spraying Citadel, even their Citadel Air paints. They're just like, they're just like paste. So we're gonna throw a little of this in the airbrush and uh, I'm just gonna blast this whole thing with yellow all the way around. And then once that's dry, I'm gonna mask it off. I'm gonna paint the gray on the outsides there. Then I'm gonna give it a little uh, little bit of a eh, semi-gloss or flat, maybe semi-gloss clear. Uh, we'll, we'll see, my mind, I change my mind all the time. I'll be right back. All right, and our yellow is dry. <clears throat> and I masked off the inside of the saucer. I know it's yellow masking tape on yellow paint. Surprisingly more difficult than you would think. Um, I might have a tiny bit I need to actually get into, right? But yeah, you can barely even see it. Um, nah, it'll probably be fine. Yeah. It's, uh, it's tricky to get it. There we go. Still easier than masking. Okay, I got to touch up the masking tape, but whatever. Um, you get the idea. Just get it perfect. Perfect. And then I'm going to go over this with a little bit more white primer to cover up this yellow because I just don't want the gray to look weird. And then we're going to go over it with our uh, Stonewall gray. I will be back in a couple of minutes, but only seconds for you. Alrighty. <clears throat> so this is all done. And uh, painted up. That was a little tricky. I had to touch up the gray a little bit by hand. But I did hit it with some uh, Mr. Super Clear matte. The whole model's matte finish, so I just did matte. It's fine. Um, <clears throat> you can see we got our blue ring still there. Don't worry about that little bit of white. Um, the deflector sits right on top of this, the 3D printed one from John Bassey's uh, design there. So that's what we need is, you know, we got that blue there. We got that ring of translucent plastic there so when we put our light behind it it will light up inside the dish we've got our formerly blue part now clear focus there we go now clear we're going to hit this with a little bit of uh, this stuff Krylon frosted glass to just dull it out a little bit uh, that's also one of uh, Todd's top tips let me leave that back in front of the Yes, it's in front of the space heater. Now, just for a few minutes, it's perfectly safe. Got a Tamiya XF6 all thinned out, ready to go. And we've got our Shapeways parts just uh, primed in some black. 
of uh, this stuff, Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Black. That's what I like to use, and uh, it dries very quickly and smoothly. So I'm going to hit I'm going to hit these up with uh, this this copper, and I will be back in a sec. We're getting close, everybody. All right. Well, we've got our frosted center part here. That will go there. And we've got our two shapeways parts here and here. So this one will go basically inside of there. Something like that. I wonder if it'll actually fit. Eh, that should be interesting to find out. I might have to clearance that. And then this will go over the outside and sit down on that like that. But basically it'll be in there, which is why I said paint job inside of here is not super critical. You just want to make sure you don't paint over your clear blue ring around there because that's what's going to throw the light on the outside and on the inside. Um, now what we've got to do is uh, I've got to finish swapping these. Uh, focus, you son of a... i got to finish swapping these out for um, blue LEDs because why not extra light? Um, hell, you know, a little extra can't hurt. Uh, probably not needed. And then we got six inches... Okay, give or take, um, maybe slightly under six inches. But six sections, basically, of that LED. Seven sections, too much to fit. Six sections, just right. Um, it's not going to go in a full loop all the way around the outside. You're going to kind of make a rectangle sort of in the middle. So let me get soldering, and I will be right back. All righty. Well, for the simple fact that I, I hate, trying to resolder LEDs onto this this quality of cable. Um, it's it's just, it's a pain. Um, I just did the strip light in there. Boom! Now, I'll tell you one thing. Usually the camera blows everything out. The camera is blowing it out a little bit, but it looks legit awesome. I don't think it needs, I don't think it needs those side lights. Honestly, don't, I don't know what they're going to do. They're not going to shine much anywhere. Um, they're going to get blocked by the back of the LED strip. So if you want to see how this is put together, we're going to take out this panel. Okay. And then we're going to take... There we go. That's pretty much it. Um, it's easier if you put in this, this, this guy first. But yeah, it's just kind of wrapped around in there. And does, it's just insanely bright. Otherwise, like it's 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 hideously bright. So I'm just gonna and I did I drilled a little seven sixteenth hole right there. So I think all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light block the back of this thing a little better so it doesn't flood into the ship and uh, throw blue light everywhere. Um, and that's that. That's it. That's 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 all she wrote. I'm just gonna hand paint some silver over the back of this thing. Um, and yeah. So man, okay. Well, almost done. Be right back. Okay, and our dish is done. I uh, after I, I, I put some silver paint on the uh, on the back where those lights went because that was clear. So I put some silver paint on the back of there to uh, bolster the mirror effect on the inside of here. Then I blacked it out on the back for light blocking, and kaboom! Look at that. Um, it's a little more blown out on camera, but honestly, it looks great in person. It's really nice. It's it's uh, like yeah, damn near ninety nine percent like perfectly even distribution of light around it. This is a great mod. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks, Todd and John. Uh, the two of them worked together to perfect this little guy. And it's definitely a nice uh, a nice improvement over the stock parts. And at night, this thing should look killer. Let me just clamp it into my helping hands there. Let's see what all lights we can turn off here. And let me shut off the house lights. Okay, and garage lights off. Now in person, there's the perfect glow against the yellow. In on camera, it blows out even more. But in person, oh man, if this thing's in like just a a dimly lit room, you know, and you boom hit the button on her, uh, or the seven switches if you're not doing central power, which I'd strongly recommend. This looks absolutely great. I don't know what they were thinking. Cover your eyes. Oh, sorry, too late. But it looks fantastic. Okay, and then we've got 
Um, so I didn't need to do the extra two stock bulbs. Um, we've just got this stuff. It's just put in, you know, windows and escape pods and, and hatches there. And then we got uh, more of the same for 88. I'm going to be sanding those windows. More of the same for 90. You know, panels, they're boring, the panels. But then when we get to, uh, sorry, this is 89. This one's, yes, it's more panels and stuff, but we got some more skeleton. So we've got to plan our, got to work on our plan for our central wiring a bit better. Um, so I have very long leads on this deflector dish right now. I don't need all that wire. I just put an extra bunch on there just so I'd have plenty of slack because um, all the direct 5-volt fed components are going to be fed directly from external power. Uh, just like the same power line that feeds all the circuit boards in the ship will go directly to feed all the 5-volt um, lights, mostly the uh, strip lights. And then we've got our 5-volt. Uh, we got to put power to our Evan Designs flasher. So I'm going to get to work on some more of these, and we'll be back. Um, I'll probably just be at the end of Stage 23. This episode was mostly about doing the deflector dish mods uh, from Todd's website with the John Bassey Design 3D parts. Uh, and it looks absolutely phenomenal. Oh, man, I'm gonna do, 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 do. Okay, nope, it's stuck in my, now it's all stuck in your heads too now, everybody. Um, I'll be back. Alrighty, so for those of you uh, modding your ship, uh, we've got our deflector all, you know, done up here. I put a piece of black electrical tape over this because there was still light bleeding out of that. When we stuck it into here, we'd still see some out of here. So we got that dealt with. I also needed to figure out how we're going to get the power in there. And I can actually snake wires through this little four-way cross there. And there's just enough room in there that we can get wires through that cross and out the sides here to power the sucker. We really only need one pair the way I'm doing it, the way I'm doing it. Not the way Todd's doing it. His is way more elaborate. I'm just getting one pair of wires in here probably like 26 gauge um because this ship pulls some amps um to tie everything into in the uh secondary hull or uh you know battle section or drop warp drives whatever you want to call it the drive section um so we're going to put this thing in here uh but we got that figured out and if you want to get some aluminum tube to fit in this hole you need 5 8 inch square aluminum tube that'll just about fit perfectly um, it's actually like scrap metal from taking down aluminum fences. Like it figures that's what they used was scrap metal to shove in the hole, uh, to hold the thing up. But it, you know, if you have the stand already, you can use that, uh, that tubing. I'm going to do something, something custom, I guess. Uh, so I just ordered a couple lengths of, uh, five eighth by five eighth, one sixteenth wall aluminum square tubing. You could find scrap on eBay. You could probably just take your measuring tape or calipers to like Home Depot or Lowe's and ah, alarms, uh, find something that size. It's, it's a pretty common size of square aluminum tubing, your local metal yard. Don't buy it online from like a metal shop. It's way too expensive. Um, you're like, Oh, it's only $7. And then there's a $30 processing fee and $15 of shipping. Um, that being said, we're going to screw this down and that's going to be our, uh, Oh, God, the deflector dish looks so good. Oh, man, that looks awesome. And you can see some light bleeding out the bottom here also, uh, right here. We'll probably end up taping over that as well when we get the bottom uh, fitted on here. But just wanted to go over that real quickly. The rest, of, I put saucer panels on. It's the standard boring song and dance, you know, finagling them into place. Um, but after that, then we got to get this thing into place. Um and uh something like there we go something like that uh once this thing goes on we're gonna have a lot of trouble pulling wires so i want to get my slack figured out now uh for pulling wires through here before we start putting the bottom on on this section did i say saucer whatever you know what i meant you meant what i knew that's where we're at i'll be right back okay so i've got this figured out finally as you can see, we've got this big uh, JST SM2 connector. Uh, I got these on my list on Amazon as well. 
Uh, this is this is at least a, a probably a 22 gauge wire in here. Uh, it should be more than enough for the whole ship, you know, at, at five volts. Even if it's pulling, you know, three and change amps, it should be plenty because uh, they use these connectors to for uh, lith lipo batteries for like smaller RC vehicles, and those things pull a lot of amps. So that should be fine. And we've got it kind of shoved through here, just like you can see. We didn't need to drill any holes in our pylon here. And then we'll have, hold on, uh, one moment, please. This thing does lock in pretty positively. Um, this JST connector will come out of our square aluminum tube, and this will hang out the bottom of the ship a little bit. And then we can plug the plug this in, click it into place nice and positive, and then have this wire extend down our tube into our base, uh, out to our uh, you know five volt power supply, and we've got our little uh, Evans Designs sink with a pause doohickey hooked up here, and I still got still got a bunch of these left here. I'm cutting them off as needed, and then putting them in place, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna wire them down from the nacelles using these two wires going to this circuit. This circuit is just going to go into the main power feed with everything else, with this circuit board, with the deflector dish. All that stuff's going to come together. And then from the saucer and the neck, they're going to come down through those holes we drilled right here and here. They're going to come in here, and they're also going to tie in. And I might make some pigtails with little JST connectors to kind of hook everything up. Uh, but this is going to be the main power feed coming into the ship and we're only going to need this one main power feed the way I'm doing it and then that'll power because we have this sub circuit board to power the uh the nav strobe formation whatever you want to call them lights either way um that's where we're at you know our deflector dish looks amazing and we've got our wiring figured out that's going to go in our tube I got some tube ordered off eBay <laughs> oddly enough this guy was just just giving it though he took down like a fence and it all had Five eighth square aluminum tubing had some black paint on it and some whatever. They were eighteen inch lengths. It's more than I need. There was two of them. It was like seven bucks. So I ordered those off eBay. Those will come in. There'll be a little bit of clearance clearance uh, in this hole with that five eighth tube because this is exactly a bit over sixteen millimeters, which is a tick over five eighths of an inch, but just a tick. And uh, with all the other stuff in play, if we need to wrap a little something around the outside of that tube to make it snug in the hole. So we like a snug fit in our hole, even when it's a square peg going to the square hole. Just unnatural. It's un ugh, ungodly. But there we are. Uh, I think we're going to leave it at that. Um, saucer stuff, panels, ugh, boring. Um, but yeah, there we go. So everyone got to see how we did the uh, the John Bossy, uh Todd McWilliams from MyPartWorks.com deflector dish mod. It is amazing. I highly recommend it. Thanks for coming, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next time on Pit Stain Hobbies. Adios, people.